Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today, we're looking at the Smok Nord 4. It's a powerful and versatile device that offers a customizable vaping experience in a compact size, and it comes in leather. So let's check this thing out. The Smok Nord 4 features a 2000 milliamp battery, output range of 5 to 80 watts, 4.5 milliliter refillable pods, a 0 0.4 ohm RPM mesh coil, 0 0.16 ohm RPM 2 mesh coil, and USB Type-C charging. So what's in the box? Well, you're going to get the Smok Nord 4 device and a 6 milliliter RPM2 pod with a 0 0.16 ohm mesh coil, another 6 milliliter pod, but this one's RPM with a 0 0.4 ohm mesh coil, USB Type-C charging cable, and a user's manual that you should definitely read before using your Smok Nord 4 device. Now, as I just mentioned, the Smok Nord 4 comes with two different pods, but they look very similar. So here's how you tell them apart. Flip them over and check out that red silicone plug for the filling port. One of them says RPM and the other one says RPM2. You also notice there's a bit of a difference in size of the coils on the bottom. The RPM original looks a little bit smaller than the RPM2 coil and these are not interchangeable. The RPM coil will not fit the RPM2 pod and vice versa. Now, if you're changing the coil on your pod, they're pretty easy to remove. All you gotta do is grip it with your fingers, give it a little pull, and it should come right out. When you're putting your coil back in or putting a new coil in, look for those flat edges on the sides of the coil, and those need to line up with the flat edges of the pod. I'm gonna go ahead, drop that in there, give it a little push, and when that thing doesn't wanna go down anymore, you should be good to go. So here on the left, we have the RPM 0 0.4 ohm mesh coil. This one works best at 25 watts. And here on the right, we have the RPM 2 0 0.6 ohm mesh coil, and this one works best at a range of 25 to 50 watts. Now, both of these coils have a sub ohm rating and operate at high wattage. So you wanna make sure to use a 70 VG to 30 PG ratio liquid so your liquid doesn't burn when you go to vape it. So to fill this pod, we're gonna locate the filling port on the side. It's pretty obvious because it's bright red. Go ahead and just pull that open with your fingernail, and that's gonna show you where the filling port is. Now we're gonna take our e-liquid bottle and stick the nozzle down there in the filling port, and we're just gonna give that thing a good squeeze until the pod is full. Please be sure not to overfill your pod. Once it's full, you go ahead and remove the bottle and be sure to press that red seal back into place. I'm gonna give it a little wipe there just in case anything spilled. Now you're gonna take your pod and reinsert it into the device. Now be careful, this has got some strong magnets in it. it just snaps closed and that could pinch your fingers if you're not careful. Now I'm gonna take the device and let it rest for just about 10 minutes and that's gonna give the e-liquid some time to soak into the coil so when we go to vape, we don't burn anything. So now we're gonna turn the device on and set the wattage. So what you need to do is press this power button five times fast. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. And there's the screen, it's lighting up. Now to set the wattage, you have an up button and a down button here. I'm gonna go ahead and dial this up a little bit. You could dial up one at a time or hold it down and it'll race through that a little bit faster. 28 watts, that sounds about right. Now you can lock the power functions by pressing this three times fast, one, two, three, you have a power lock and this is gonna prevent you from accidentally firing the device or changing the wattage. But you can't vape when you're in power lock mode, so to vape again, press the button three times. One, two, three. Power unlocked, you're good to go. To vape from the device, you'll need to hold down the fire button while you take a draw from the drip tip. Max vape time is eight seconds. Anything after that and it will automatically shut down for safety reasons. To turn the device off, we're gonna hit the power button five times fast again, ready? One, two, three, four, five. Goodbye. Now the Smok Nord 4 does have two airflow adjustment rings, one on the front side here and one on the back side here. They are a bit tricky to turn though. If it is pointing up like this, that little notch right there is going in that direction, it will only turn clockwise. 
and that is going to restrict airflow by turning it that direction. Right now, if it looks like this, that is maximum airflow. So let's go ahead and try to turn this. I'm gonna get in there with my fingernail and just give it a little twist as far as it'll go. Let's take a look. Hey, we did it. We closed that up all the way. You can set these up for whatever your preference is. I'm probably gonna go with that one closed and that one open. Now the battery indicator is here on the right side of the screen and it says I'm at about 67% right now. If I need to charge that up, I'm gonna take my USB Type-C cable and plug that right to the bottom of the device there. Make sure the other end of your cord is plugged into a power source and just let that charge up. And once we are to a charge that we like, we can go ahead and just unplug that and you're ready to go. So overall, the Smock Nord 4 is a reliable, customizable device that offers sub ohm performance in a compact package. And this one just looks super luxurious. If it sounds like the right device for you, we'll make sure to visit blacknode.com today. And as always, happy vaping.